Hey everybody, this is Daniel back again with another quick tutorial. Uh, and this one, we're not necessarily focusing on the RPG game, um, but we're going to focus on a sub-genre, I guess you would say, of the video game development uh, world. And this is just a quick little demo I whipped together, and this is all done in the Blender game engine, uh, all real time. And you'll notice there's a couple little glitches on the model to the left. But for the most part, it looks very similar to the model on the right. Uh, and some of the glitches that are on there can actually be solved just through a little bit of uh, uh, image editing which is really easy stuff to do. But you can see how they look very similar. The difference between the two is one has a grand total of 32,000 verts, uh, or I'm sorry, 653 verts. The other one has 31,000. Okay, so you can see the difference here. Let me put them both together in the same mesh for a minute. There you can see the difference in the quality of these two. Um, and as with any video game, you can see some of my problems right there, uh, as with any video game, you're wanting to s conserve faces so that the the um, so the computer has to do less uh, and less uh, has to do less computational stuff. If that makes sense. Sorry, my words are tripping up here a little bit today. Um, but you're probably wondering how that happens. You know, how do we get to that point there? Um, and of course, you can always make it look nicer by subdividing it, things like that. Um, but that's what I kind of want to go over. So before we do that, I want to walk you through a little bit of what bump mapping really does in the real world. Uh, this is just a quick little demo I put together in a couple of minutes, so it's not perfect. Let me give you an example. Here's an example from Quake 4. Okay, and you can see here on the left image, let me zoom out just a little bit, there we go. On the left image here, you can see how it works, and it looks okay, but that's not how we exactly want it. If you look on the right, however, you can see how there's little divots in these spots here. Uh, you can see underneath there there's spots where the bolts are. It looks like it goes in and out. On the gun itself you can see the rivets and the ripples in the metal. Um, along this seam and edge here it looks like it goes in. Yeah, well, um, these are all due to a bump map. Okay, and What this means is that you basically have a high res mesh and a low res mesh and then an image tells the rendering engine what the differences between the two are and it compensates when you're actually rendering it to make it look more real. Let me move on to the next one here, and you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. The one on the left here, the original mesh, had 4 million triangles in it. Okay, it looks like a 3D scan to me. Then they simplified it, which so it only has 500 triangles. Then when you take a normal map of the two to tell you what's different with them and apply it to the, fir or to the second one, it looks nearly identical to the first one. However, you're still only rendering those 500 triangles. One more example. Um, zoomed in real far there. This is another example of a character from a video game. And uh, here you can see on the far left is literally every single point in vertice on there. You can see it's pretty low low res, which is good. The second is when it's all smoothed out, what it looks like. So this is what the actual model is. Then the third one is when they've actually applied um, the bump mapping to it. So you can see how the quality goes way up. What the user sees as you know, super high quality graphics is actually just a lot of tricks because this is still what it's being rendered. Uh, and then the texture being put on on top of that gives you a really neat look uh, and feel to it. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, let's just go ahead and start with a brand new Blender uh, file here, scene. All right, go ahead and delete your center cube because we don't need that anymore. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and add the monkey, just a monkey here, okay? Uh, add a mesh monkey. All right, and... Um, you can leave it that size, that's fine. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. Some people suggest using what are called multi-res um, models, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So go ahead and add a modifier to your Suzanne model here, and we're just going to go in here and multi-resolution, okay? Now, you can change this preview, and none of these will change yet. You have to hit subdivide first, okay? So hit that a couple times until you get down to a relatively high level of or number of points, okay? Now, this is used for sculpting because you're not actually changing the model. However, you are making it look nicer. And it's not as simple as a subsurf, um, and I'll show you how, uh, why in a minute. So we're going to do that. Go ahead and hit smooth. And uh, just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and give it one more. Okay, since we've got a few points. So 507 to start with. Now we're up to 126,000. Okay. Go ahead and go into sculpt mode. Um, and I'm just going to turn the strength way up because I just want to do some wacky manipulation stuff. I don't even really care. Okay, so here we're making it look like he's got some sort of like scar tissue all up and down his uh, body. We're just going to do some vertical lines there. Maybe some 
horizontal ones there. Some curly keys around there. Okay, so now you can see we've really messed up his face. Uh, and part of the reason that we're going to get an odd uh, thing is because of that. But if we take this now, we take the preview down. Um, whoops, we're in sculpt mode. There we go. Now if we take the preview mode down, if you notice, until you get to zero, they still resemble the final mesh. They still look like the final mesh. However, they get less and less um, high quality, which is important. Okay, so for our highest quality one, um, go ahead and we're going to shift D to duplicate, move it to another layer, let's move it to layer two, um, and go ahead and we'll just leave it like that for now. The first one, back on layer one, you can see where we've got two layers here, layer one, we're going to bring the preview down to, we'll do one, okay, hit apply, and now we're down to... 2,000 vertices. So that's, I mean, that's still a decent number for a higher, or for a video game mesh. But of course, in the real world, you could even simplify it farther. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this a texture. Okay. So go ahead and split your screen real quick. Open up your image editor. Tab to get into edit mode. With all the points selected, hit U, UV, uh, or smart UV project. Okay. Uh, and this is just a time saver for us. In reality, you'd want to go through and actually do all the uh, UV mapping stuff. But since we don't have time for that, we're just going to go with this, okay? You can see it's unwrapped my mesh over here. That's good. Go ahead and add a new image. 1024 by 1024 is fine for now. And we're just going to call it norm for normal, uh, because this is a normal map. Normal not meaning the same as everything else, but normal meaning uh, it takes account of the normals of the object. Now, if you go into shaded mode uh, right off the bat, you should see that you've got the texture applied. I'm going to move the light over here. There we go. And it looks kind of splotchy and whatever, but that's that's not a big deal. That's totally fine for now. Now, um, there's a thing called baking, so texture baking. And if you notice real quickly, if we go in here, you can see how the two overlay. Uh, and they pretty much follow each other with a, with a couple little exceptions, but for the most part, they line up, which is good. Um, texture baking is something very interesting. This is something so that you can take, um, for instance, an object... Um, well, here, I'll give you an example. Full render, if I were to bake it to this, it's going to fully render the object, but give me a texture that represents the full render. So see how, here how you can actually see the shadows and everything, when in reality the shadows aren't real, they're just rendered on there. Okay. Um, another one you can do, and this is the one we're going to be using, is normals. Okay. And if you bake normals, right now it's going to give you um, all blue. That means that there's no difference from this model to itself. And that's kind of obvious, you know, 1 plus 1, or 1 equals 1, it's the same thing. But when you take a second object into the mix, okay, and you select the high res first, then select the low res. Now, when you hit uh, when you hit bake, what happens? Well, because they're both being baked onto one, you're gonna get um, what you could call a priority mismatch, okay? Something where it doesn't know which mesh it's supposed to be checking against. So what it does is it sees which one's on top of the other, okay? Which one's farther away from it than the other? Yes, I know you're going slow. And you end up with some weird issues. So for one, like right here, it didn't even do anything. Okay. So the solution to this is by hitting selected to active. So this means I'm comparing the selected one, the dark orange, with the active one, the light orange. Okay. And at this point, hit bake. Um, in reality, it won't take this long to render it out because you're not having to run um, screen capture programs and stuff like that. There it goes. Now we have something that's different. Okay. And if we go back, go back into shaded mode, you can see how it's got this weird colored kind of hippie looking thing to it, okay? Uh, and if you look over here at your texture, you'll also see the same thing. This is where it's different. Any part that there's a different color, the rendering engine knows to interpret that as a change in elevation or a change in its uh, a, ch a variance between this model and that model, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and switch into GLSL mode. And the way we do that is just uh, switch into Blender game. Uh, and then choose GLSL under shading. Okay, leave all that as it is. There we go. We can close out all this stuff. We don't really need it. All right, let's go ahead and take these across. Uh, I'm just going to move the camera into position. And in reality, of course, you don't really need to have a camera in position because you just don't. Uh, go into shaded mode, and you'll notice that our texture's gone. That's fine. Go ahead and add a new te uh, material. I'm going to my monkey. Uh, I'm going to set the intensity all the way up just so I can get a better. Um, there we go, some better there. Alright, we're going to add a new texture, and call this one Norm. Short for normal, because it's a normal map. Choose Image, 
and then select our normal map image. Now you'll notice when we first start, it, it gives it, it's kind of weird, it looks like it just kind of splattered it on the front of the monkey. Um, because we've told it what the UV coordinates should be, change coordinates under mapping to UV. There we go, and now it's wrapped on there correctly. Now what we're going to do is under image sampling, select normal map and choose tangent. Okay, And this is just telling the rendering engine that, hey, this image is a texture or is a normal map, not just a normal texture. We're going to uncheck color so that it doesn't affect the color of the object, but then check normal under geometry. And now we have what appears to be little bumps and creases and you know patterns on the monkey. And if we pull in the second, uh, the high quality mesh as well, and I'm just going to pull it over to the side so we can get them both, both in there. There we go. You'll notice they look very similar. Now they don't look exactly the same. Uh, and in reality, you'd actually want to spend some more time making sure you really map those points out well, um, so that it looks more um, uh, more convincing, more realistic. Um, but this is something that game developers use all the time um, for making models look higher quality than they really are, uh, and it's very effective. Um, so that's just a quick overview. Um, a couple ideas what you could use these for. You could use them from everything from uh, on the walls for textures, uh, on different objects, on characters especially, things that are going to be um, really scrutinized by the player or looked at all the time. Uh, they're really handy to do. Um, and one last quick thing before we leave. Oh, I don't care. Goodbye. Um, one last thing we can do before I sign off here. Um, if you notice that your bump map doesn't look quite as n nice, because here you notice it looks good, but it doesn't look, it looks like really dry. If you turn up the specular on your object's material, those bump maps will really pop a lot more. Um, and you can even use other, like uh, Wardzio is a good one especially if you're making something look wet. There we go, and you can see how that just looks like it's shiny or uh, nice like that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, feel free to subscribe, leave comments, uh, tell your friends, tell your parents. I don't care what you tell, it's totally fine. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.